Today's question is from Chris, who asks, you've helped me a lot in my automation career. What inspires you to teach automation? Well, Chris, to understand that, you gotta understand my journey. And like a lot of yours have been or will be, it is not a very straight path. <laughs> I actually started out as a corporate man. I absolutely loved it. Could go in and sprinkle a little automation dust and boom, the machine would work better. And then got pulled into a meeting and they said that we were getting balled out. And I tell you guys, there are winners and losers in buyouts. And I was definitely one of the losers. Then everybody started jockeying for position. And one guy took aim at me and really pushed me into a corner where I had to choose between my job and an event that Amber wanted me to go to. The event was on a Saturday and I had made them aware of it weeks in advance. At the very last minute, he made Saturday mandatory. I told him, don't forget, I already have an event. And he just shrugged his shoulders and said, Saturday's mandatory. I thought about it and I decided I was not gonna go to Amber's event because one, Amber was eight months pregnant with our first child and I knew I needed to provide. Friday rolled along and there's a sign there that says Saturday mandatory. There had never been a sign posted in the time I had been there. So it was obviously for me and it flew all over me. Now I kept my cool. I didn't say anything. Saturday came along and I didn't show up for work. I went to Amber's event and honestly, I couldn't tell you a single thing that happened there, but that's where the wheels started turning for TW Controls. Monday came along and I got my first and only write up in my career. And then I turned in my resignation. My boss, who, if you recall from previous videos, was the good boss, said, you know, I really hate for this to happen this way. Just keep this quiet and let me go talk to the president and just see what I can come up with. He came back with an offer to move me into a completely different department to remove me from that toxic situation, but also to remove me from my passion. I thought about it long and hard that night. I decided to stick to my guns and I quit and started TW Controls. I'd love to say that's the end of the story. I knew how to automate equipment, but I didn't know how to sell a job. I didn't know how to quote a job. I mean, I didn't know how to do any of these business things. One way I found that I was able to promote myself was in the control forums. I started answering people's questions, trying to show that I had the best solution. Someone sent me a message one day and said that they really appreciated my post and they looked up forward to every one of them. They read them and they tried each one of them. And it shocked me. This was right on the fringes of social media really starting. So the idea of somebody reading something really without actually needing to know it was just kind of foreign. It, changed the way that I acted online. And I went from the guy that had the solution to your problem to the guy who would walk you through your journey of getting through your problem. I made me the person that you could come and get questions answered by. And that led to the question that would define my YouTube channel. Someone asked if I could make a video on control panels that wasn't so boring. No way. <laughs> Especially if you look at our industry and YouTube then, I was probably already on the fringes of what people were doing and my videos were still insanely dry. But I had been wanting to learn how to mix different videos and how to put text and images over top of videos. And I decided to use this as an opportunity to practice and I made the Dancing Lady Control Panel video, which now has 400,000 views. When I get up in the morning and I get a cup of coffee, I don't look at the news. I don't even look at my own sales numbers. I look to see what questions you've asked me overnight. 